South Africa ranks as the sixth most biodiverse nation globally. But what does that mean for the people who live here? In landscapes ranging from the vibrant, biodiversity-rich Cape Floristic region to the UNESCO World Heritage Sites of Mapungubwe and Isimangaliso Wetland Park, classic conservation approaches such as national parks, game reserves, and marine protected areas often ignore crucial aspects of social and spatial justice. Conservation resources are often distributed unevenly, favoring elite tourism and biodiversity preservation over the needs of local communities. This imbalance exacerbates inequalities rooted in colonialism, slavery, and apartheid. This shows how biodiversity-centric policies can drastically impact local communities' lives. In Mapungubwe, fences and restricted access to conservation areas impede traditional rituals and challenge residents' livelihoods, similar to the issues faced in the Makasa Dunes Conservation Area. In Isimangaliso, limitations on traditional practices such as grass cutting, hunting, and fishing exacerbate inequality. These divisive policies fail to balance conservation goals with community needs. In light of these glaring inequalities, we prioritize social and spatial justice in conservation. For us, conservation is not just about putting up fences and protecting wildlife. We take an integrated approach that acknowledges the history of land dispossession displacement, and the criminalization of small-scale fishes. We call it living landscapes because we focus on how people live in the broader landscape and their connections with nature, including wildlife, flora, wetlands, marine and cultural landscapes, as well as history, livelihoods, and traditional practices. Our work challenges the conventional prioritization of environmental goals, which often come at the expense of the rights and livelihoods of local populations. Instead, we promote policies that are inclusive and aim to rectify past and present inequalities. To illustrate why we emphasize social and spatial justice, we'll examine our three case studies, Isimangaliso, Cape Town, and Mapungubwe. In Cape Town, wealthier areas boast well-maintained parks, while under-resourced communities on the Cape Flats struggle with neglected green spaces. Decades of neglect have left places like Edith Stevens Nature Reserve and Rondeflay Nature Reserves facing pollution and lack of funding, affecting their safety and usability. Residents who live near or in areas like Table Mountain can connect with nature daily, but those in Manenberg face significant barriers due to safety concerns and run-down facilities. In Isimangaliso, despite land claims being settled and 18% of the land governed by the Ingonyama Trust since 1994, communities face restrictions on customary practices, land use, and fishing activities. These regulations, governed by UNESCO and Ramsar, have criminalized livelihood activities, leading to nighttime fishing, fence cutting, and dangerous encounters with wildlife 
and armed rangers. The rise in private conservation has also increased securitization, surveillance, and violence towards communities. In Mapungubwe, despite its world heritage status, black communities still struggle to access burial sites to perform rituals within state and private protected areas. These conservation areas boast world-class facilities but fail to undo the legacies of colonial and apartheid evictions, denying communities their dignity. Additionally, ambiguous compensation policies mean that livestock lost to wildlife is rarely repaid. These real-life examples demonstrate that conservation in South Africa must go beyond preserving landscapes and wildlife. It must also prioritize justice and equity for the communities living within these lands. For the local communities and conservation professionals we've worked with, social justice in conservation means equitable redistribution of wildlife and marine resources meaningful participation for communities, particularly women, ensuring their voices are heard in their local languages. Free, prior and informed consent in decision-making for new protected areas and infrastructure. Prioritizing the needs of local communities over wealthy tourists. Considering the interests of all stakeholders not just wealthy white landowners. Fair wages for black conservation workers, especially in private protected areas. For spatial justice and conservation, this means restoring rights, land and access to dispossessed communities. Removing barriers that prevent access to resources such as fines and gear confiscations. Ensuring people near protected areas are not displaced, excluded or treated with brutality. Ensuring access to natural resources supports the cultural, spiritual and economic fabric of communities. Across Africa, a new vision for conservation is emerging, one that integrates social justice with environmental stewardship. By rethinking our approach to include community ownership, active participation in conservation efforts, and the equitable distribution of resources, we can ensure that biodiversity conservation benefits everyone not just a privileged few.